Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films, my name is Alan. Movie monsters, the larger, the scarier, the better. Or at least that's what modern movie studios think. But how large exactly are these giant behemoths off the green screen? How large would they look like in real life? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, but instead of using measurements that are kind of hard to quantify in our heads, we're going to be taking real-life objects and distances that you're used to dealing with every day. Let's start with a galaxy far, far away. The Rancor. This terrifying, misunderstood beast was brought to life by the wizards at Industrial Light and Magic. They reportedly wanted to create a cross between a bear and a potato, which in my opinion is only the third scariest starch after Pars Nips and Yams. The Rancor pup was only around a few feet high. But in universe, they're around 16 feet tall. In metric, that's about 25 kilometers. If a ranker was chilling in your neighborhood, it would be just a few feet higher than your average single level ranch and a few feet shorter than your average split level house. Next up is an equally terrifying Star Wars monster, the Pergil. They're basically the galactic equivalent of suicidal deer on the highway. These gigantic space whales are good at doing two things, killing spacers in hyperspace lanes and powering futuristic oil lamps. They also have organic hyperdrives built inside of them, which is probably the dumbest hyperdrive-related thing to happen to Star Wars since that chick from Jurassic Park and Ackbard, the entire First Order fleet. Was it an awesome scene? Yes, it was a pretty cool scene, but does it make every Star Wars battle that ever happened now seem kind of pointless? Yes. Anyway, we're not given the exact size of the Purgles, but they varied in length just like the deer here on Earth. Some were just a bit smaller than a ship like the Ghost, which is around 43 meters long, or just short of half of a ball field. The larger ones were closer to a third of the size of an Imperial class Star Destroyer, which is 1600 meters or 2000 miles, which means it's around 500 meters. That's about six and a quarter Manhattan blocks, or two Dwayne Reeds, three Halal carts, a Bank of America, and a Starbucks. Moving on from Star Wars, we go on to the original movie monster, Godzilla. Bane of the Japanese economy and the ultimate reason why nuclear proliferation is dangerous, this radioactive monstrosity has changed sizes many times over the course of more than half a century and 33 movies. The earliest version of the reptile, the 1955 Shoya Godzilla, was only around 50 meters tall. And I say only 50 meters because I have terrible spatial awareness, which is why I always think planes are about to crash into buildings far off in the distance. 50 meters is just short of four school buses driven by meth addicts off a bridge, which then neatly stack on top of each other. Then we have the 1984 Haishi Godzilla, which was around 80 to 100 meters long. That's just a few meters higher than the Delta IV heavy rocket commonly used to launch satellites into space and around the height of NASA's new Ares rocket. But of course, most of us haven't seen these rockets in real life, so that's around six to seven school buses driven by meth addicts off a bridge, which then neatly stack on top of each other. Lastly, we have the Marvel era Godzilla. Yes, Marvel, and therefore Disney, also have licensing for Godzilla, along with almost every childhood memory you've ever had, like the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and the 1980s US Olympic hockey team. Anyway, Marvel Godzilla, because Marvel is all about that epic size, is 184 meters or the same height as the Grand Seasons Hotel in Kuala Lumpur. No? There's like 1.76 million people in that city. Okay, maybe that's a little bit confusing. This Godzilla is roughly the size of 13 and a half school buses driven by meth addicts off a bridge which then neatly stack on top of each other. Next up, and equally as famous, is the missing link between humanity and Ron Perlman, King Kong. The original 1933 King Kong film featured a giant ape that was all over the place height-wise. Filmmaker Marion C. Cooper played around with the size of King Kong depending on the scene. He figured it was more important to make King Kong fit the frame they were filming rather than create some uniform size. Officially speaking, that King Kong was around 50 feet high. Roughly around the same height as a five-story building. Later renditions of King Kong would be a lot larger. In Kong Skull Island, King Kong was 104 feet, making him the largest version of the giant ape. That's about 14 feet longer than the distance from first and second base on a baseball diamond. Last up on our list is the movie about a deranged British guy who loves swimming around in the ocean and assaulting wildlife. We're of course talking about Jason Statham in the movie Meg. Statham is around 5 foot 10 or 2 mini me's. The Megadons that Statham terrorized in the movie reached a length of around 27.4 meters or 5 and 3 quarter 2019 Ford Mustangs. But in real life, these giant peaceful fish only grew up to around 18 meters long or around 3 and 3 quarters 2019 Ford Mustangs. Rest in peace, Megalodon. Who knew that thin cloud of hydrogen sulfide was protecting you from nature's apex predator? Jason Statham. Ready? 
Well guys, that is our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe and hit that notification button. If this video does well enough, maybe we'll make it into a series. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist. Unless you're Jason Statham, in which case you're, you're a dick.